2014. It's 5:04. You um, call to order, Janet, and take. Roll. Trustees present tonight are Trustee Aguilar, Calderon, and Vizcarra. Trustee Duarte and Ortega are absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. And for the record, Ms. Duarte is on her way. We're going to move on to our Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? Item C on our agenda is the approval of our agenda. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion. So motion by Mr. Calderon to approve tonight's agenda. Is there a second? A second. It's a second by Ms. Aguilar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, those voting in favor are Trustee Aguilar Calderon and myself. We'll take public comments um, only on closed session items right now. I don't have any in front of me. Seeing none, we're going to move on to Section E, the announcement of convening into closed session. Mr. Weiler. The board will not go into closed session to discuss the items uh, listed in the agenda under Section F. We will return at approximately 6 o'clock, and if needed to go back into closed session later, uh, we will do so on those same items. All right, good evening, welcome back. <coughs> we are reconvening from <coughs> closed session. It is 6.13 p.m. Uh, before our announcements of action taken in closed session, let the record reflect that at 5.40, Ms. Duarte joined us in closed session and Ms. Aguilar has left um, the meeting she left at approximately 6 p.m. with the intent to return at some point during the course of the evening. We are, Mr. and Mr. Ortega also arrived at 5.08 during our closed session. We are on item H, if you're following along in your agenda. Announcement of actions taken in closed session, Mr. Wiley. There are no actions to report at this time. Thank you. We are on item I, superintendent's report, Ms. Ambris. Yes, good, good evening, trustees. Um, well, I'm going to start this evening with uh, a moment of silence for uh, a couple of people from our uh, educational community one way or, who, one way or another, have touched us. Uh, first of all, for Mrs. Aurora Pinto and for Mrs. Diaz. And uh, Aurora Pinto was an administrative assistant in our district uh, for many years. She worked at Aurora High School and at Rockwood School. Uh, she worked in our district for 36 years. Two of those years, she was a bilingual projects uh, office clerk at Rockwood. And the 30, remaining 34, she was uh, uh, the uh, executive assistant or the admin assistant at, at Aurora High School. Um, and so we lost her during spring break due to a, an illness and we were notified during spring break of this. Uh, also, we were notified uh, yesterday that the mother of two of our, our uh, district staff members, um, mother of Eugenia Diaz from Educational Services Department and Norma Diaz Flores, a teacher at Rockwood, their mother passed away early yesterday morning. Mrs. Diaz is remembered as being a very vibrant vibrant woman. I last saw her, I think most of us last saw her at the uh, foundation dinner um, that we had a month ago. And she cherished, she cherished life as a daily gift and enjoyed good music and dancing. And so I just wanted to uh, express our collective condolences uh, to the families who will, and these, of these two great women that will be greatly missed. So if we can have a moment of silence for both. Thank you. Uh, and um, briefly, we have also two teachers in our district who have been, uh, we've been notified by AXA um, 
that we have two teachers in our district that will be honored on May 22nd as Teachers of the Year. And congratulations are in order for Ms. Lucia Mora Chavez, who's a teacher at Rockwood School, and Ms. Maria Munoz, who's a teacher at Jefferson School. Uh, every year, AXA uh, recognizes student, I'm sorry, teachers and administrators uh, at uh, their yearly um, dinner. And two of our teachers this year are teachers of the year. And unfortunately for us sitting here at the dais, uh, May 22nd happens to be our next regularly scheduled board meeting. Uh, and so in making sure that our teachers are supported at the event, uh, I'll make sure that the principals that work directly with these stellar ladies are in attendance at the event. So congratulations to both Lucia and Maria uh, on this. Uh, in, uh, in addressing the many needs and concerns that our community and our board has had uh, over the the year regarding uh, the discipline issues and policies of our district, particularly the items that that unfortunately arise with our with our in particular our teenagers, um, the use of drugs and alcohol. Uh, we've been reviewing what our district policies are for student discipline, and I just want the board to know that. Uh, uh, we're going to be working collaboratively with the Office of Educational Services to best address the needs of our students who find themselves in discipline issues, especially when it comes to alcohol and drugs. Um, in particular, we want to pay attention to board policy 5131.6, uh, uh, pay paying special attention to the development, implementation, and evaluation of a comprehensive prevention and intervention program that's going to help our students hopefully stay drug-free and um, away from drugs as much as possible. Uh, as uh, Dr. Asiad has um, come to the, to the microphone many times and uh, stating, you know, what are we going to do about the drugs that are in our community? Well, part of it is based in the education of our, of our students. And so uh, we really will be working uh, closely in implementing um, the intent of board policy 5131. Uh, so, um, and that is all for tonight. Thank you. <coughs> sure. She's speaking? Yeah, she's going to say something like this about an agency. Good evening, board members. Uh, Betty Nunez from Family Resource Center. We do have an agency that's partnering up with Calexico Unified School District, and that's Behavioral Health Services, that are already coming to our schools for the Too Good for Drugs. At the elementaries, we have started with all the sixth graders. Um, we still need two, two more schools to have the Too Good for Drugs programs come in. And we are starting also with our junior highs, high school and Aurora. And that's the Too Good for Drugs and Violence. That's another component that Behavioral Health has started this year. Thank you. Move on to item J, and we, that's our um, association comments. And Ms. Yurik and Mr. De La Rosa, you also have slips filled out for public comment on this particular topic. So just to clarify, this is this would be your moment anyway. So I'll pull those slips if that's okay. But I know you have slips for something else. So uh, we'll start just in order of the way it's listed in the agenda with ACT and. Representing ACT tonight is Ms. Annie Yurick. My name is Annie Yurick. I'm representing ACT. Mr. Cooper asked me to report that ACT has been working in the LCAP, LCAP along with the administration. And we have several more meetings, I guess, taking place next week. And we are looking forward to continue this new process. And I hope that, you know, we continue working as well as we have together, administration and ACT. Thank you. And that's for Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Ms. Yurt. 
Mr. Good evening, Board of Education. Uh, Cesar Rodriguez, CSEA Chapter President, Collect School Unified 399. Um, I'd like to start off first by thanking you for the resolution recognizing classified school employees last month. Um, I apologize for not being here, but I do want to thank you for the resolution. I would also like to remind you that uh, uh, CSEA was founded in 1927 by custodians who were trying to find a, a way to have pensions for classified employees. It was because a school nurse who had worked 38 years who had emphysema could not afford to retire because she, there was no pension at that time. So the custodians got together and they went to the legislature and PERS was born, PERS was formed. And it has been in existence ever since. To date, there are three, three um, excuse me, to date, uh, past president of California School Employees Association sits as the chairman of the PERS board. Also, uh, CSEA happens to have three, uh, uh, three um, former state presidents that sit on the executive board of the AFL-CIO. The AFL-CIO represents over a million workers uh, nationwide. To date, there are 210,000 classified school employees statewide. There is 1.3 million school employees nationwide. And our, um, our celebration starts May 18th and runs till May 24th. Uh, we have a lot of activities planned for the district and we have a little surprise for the district and the city. Hopefully, if, if we can pull it off, everybody will notice and will we'll, uh, notice that it is Classified School Employees Week. I also would like to go on record that the leadership of our local chapter um, would like to uh, endorse the swimming pool project that we are trying to get off the ground here in Colexco. We encourage the school board and the city to work together and make this a reality for our kids. Uh, Mr. De La Rosa will follow up with more comments. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, good evening, uh, board members, um, administration and members of the audience. Um, it's been a while since I come to a board meeting. Uh, I've enjoyed the rest. I don't really particular, particularly like coming to board meetings, but here we are. Um, we're looking forward, CSEA is a unit to start a negotiating process again. Um, we were looking forward to continuing it in June. Unfortunately, um, we've had a long layoff and, and it is late in the year again. We're in May and um, we're winding down the fiscal year. So hopefully um, calendars will be cleared and, and we can make um, enough dates so we can get in t and expedite the process. Um, just on, uh, on a note that uh, from Ms. Ambris and your report where y you mentioned the uh, drug abuse and uh, the concern where the kids are taking drugs and there's been some cases, you know. But um, one of the things that, that CSEA would like to just throw out there for the board members to hear and for administration is um, if you guys could look into the possibility of trainings so that campus proctors can identify better um, mannerisms and behavior that a child might have if he's under the influence or you know s the telltale signs and not all of them are trained um, in these uh, techniques so um, that would be a good idea if you guys can can look into that um, other than that um, it's good to see the faces. Uh, Mr. Ortega haven't really actually met. Um, Mr. Calderon, Ms. Duarte, Ms. Vizcarra, uh, Zuno, and um, sorry that Norma's not here. But um, Ms. Randall, welcome back. Officially, I haven't got to the podium to say that. I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. We're on section J of our agenda. No, I'm sorry, section K, our comments from the public. I have Mr. De La Rosa, would you like to speak now or on the comment, on the on that item? On the item of the agenda item? 
Right. Do you, would you like to do it now or when we get to the item? Right now it's good that we don't have to stick around. Okay, so we have Mr. <laughs> <laughs> De La Rosa on. Hey, they run us ragged eight. at Cesar Chavez, you know, so <laughs> I need my rest. Okay. <laughs> um, on the going out to bid for uh, security services, this is an issue that's uh, been hot on my mind for the last few weeks. Um, over the last few weeks, um, I've been showing to work up work on on Monday mornings, and I've been finding what's called uh, gravity bongs. And if you know what a gravity bong is, you can Google it, YouTube it, and they'll show you how to make it. And what it is, a device that's used to smoke marijuana. And uh, we've had some youth, uh, I guess, jump the fence and use our facilities for safe haven so that they can uh, get in there. Now, on a particular Sunday, one of our parents, and I'm sharing this with you for your information, one of the parents um, was driving by, and she saw, she saw two youths climb the fence. She, she approached them. She pulled over, approached them, asked them what they were doing there. They said they were going to go into play. Uh, she notified the school, the leadership at the school. I was made aware of it. I went down to, um, I, I called Mr. Martinez for uh, the phone number for security, for dispatch, so that they, we could send security over there. And uh, I went down to the school site, found the gravity bong, pretty fresh. They had left, I guess. It took me about an hour to get there. I was in the central. And um, so I called the number provided by Mr. Martinez with the security dispatch. Now, I told them what I was doing there. I told them <coughs> why. And they, they told me, we're sending somebody to meet you right now. I waited over an hour. Nobody showed up. Just the other day, and, and I can't say that I see them regularly, okay? So just the other day, uh, assistant principal was working on a Sunday, and she encountered a youth inside the campus, asked him to leave, gave her a little bit of static. He ended up leaving. Uh, security at around the same time that that was happening did a fast drive by the school. Didn't stop, didn't slow down, didn't, there was nothing. So my recommendation, if it's gonna go out to bid, I don't know why it's, the, the other company that went through the bidding process before, because I sat on that committee, um, wasn't accepted or approved. But if you are gonna go out to bid, um, if you can write in your bid, and this is a suggestion, that there be some type of log at the site, somewhere on the site, that they have to go in, get off the vehicle, check the site, and log in what they checked or whatever, so that we can have some type of accountability. We can't have a, sec a security guard company pretending to patrol, and it's not really happening. Just being in the car doesn't mean nothing. It, I've seen the bids, I've seen the requirements, the job descriptions. And they're supposed to get off and do checks. And I have yet to see that. And I've encountered them in their vehicles for over the years. But this is the last time it's getting a little, a little out of control. So I'd like to see a little bit more accountability for any security company that's contracted. So if you're going to put it out to bid, please make some type of adjustment on the job description. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. De La Rosa. We have Mr. Raul Ureña. Okay. <clears throat> We're on item L, discussion possible action on standing committees, the discussion and possible action regarding identification, status, continuation, or termination of and membership upon board standing committees. Um, do you want to sure. give an intro? Or yes, as, as, as the board is aware, we have um, discussed uh, over the, the past year, you know, what committees uh, are standing committees of the board and what committees are not standing committees, such as what committees are the ones that are um, perhaps uh, uh, superintendent um, created for
for example. And so in order to determine which are standing committees, like I know that right now at this point we have uh, two more active committees. One would be um, the insurance committee. The other is the, uh, the pool committee. Uh, the pool committee is really not I'd like to say is not a standing committee, so to speak. It's a committee that does meet, not regularly, not at, or as a, like every month or so. Um, probably the, mo the most uh, active committee happens to be our insurance committee that does meet uh, pretty much on a monthly basis. And that is a committee that was, uh, I believe, a, a board uh, committee, created committee. Uh, the pool committee was uh, created by a former superintendent. Uh, and I believe just that in general, the basic differences are that standing committees of the board are regulated or, or reigned over by um, your, the Brown Act requirements, if, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, committees that are created, for example, by another entity that's not the board, uh, for example, we have an IVROP uh, board that Mr. Calderon sits on, but he's, it's not a, board, uh, a, a committee that's created by the board. Uh, it's another entity. And then, like the pool committee, that was a committee created by a, f a former superintendent, but if it's a committee that's created by a superintendent, that doesn't necessarily uh, fall under uh, Brown Act guidelines, is my understanding. And so maybe this is a, a time where we need to discuss, I mean, we can certainly post, for example, when all of our meetings are, there's no <laughs> intent to, to cover anything, but um, we just would like to have a clear determination and definition of uh, which are our standing committees and which are not and, and if we have any that are currently standing, uh, do we want to continue with them, create any new ones, et cetera, and perhaps leave it open so that if this board uh, pleases to have more standing committees in the future that we, we have um, the dialogue to create those committees as we go forth. Don't we have also the facilities committee? Yes, and that is the most recent committee uh, that is going to uh, be in place for for the duration of our facilities master plan, mm -hmm. okay, development. Is that a board committee or is that a superintendent committee? That's more of a superintendent committee it, it, under, under my direction to uh, Mr. Martinez. Yeah. And how many, there's one board member on that committee? Uh, I believe there was an invitation to have at least two, um, and I don't think that you've been able to attend all of them. Or yesterday we were at a meeting yesterday, I, the day before. Okay, so yes, um, but that's a, also a superintending committee. So in the agenda was posted, just to be the notice, and it's on our website, and we have a list of the meeting dates that will. So they're there, but I just want to make a clarification that it. It's not a standing committee of the board, rather it is a committee <coughs> created by the superintendent's direction. And maybe, uh, I know that we have some defined committees that are inactive, mm -hmm. um, and I think they're on our board policies, huh? Okay. So maybe we should reflect back on those board policies and see if we need to change those. And then um, have a superintendent policy for her commit for right. mm -hmm. those committees that way they can be identified right. in the okay. policies yeah and that makes the most sense and um i'd say that in terms of of some potential action that because like we've we've talked about this before and i think we also had a list of what those mm -hmm. committees were um and then we went back and really couldn't find record of how they originated were they a superintendent committee was it a board committee there's really no record on a lot of them other than the insurance committee. So I'd say that we should bring bring this back with the board policy on this topic and then look at the policy from that perspective and see if we need to change it or update it and change these committees. Okay, great. Um, may I make a comment? Yes. Uh, as far as the uh, the pool committee, you mentioned that those meetings uh, could be posted. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just feel it would be prudent for those individuals in the community that, that want to know what those discussions are. You know, they could participate and, and know mm -hmm. before any meeting and so yes, forth. Yes, absolutely. I, I do believe that, that 
there's a uh, that's probably the best avenue to take to yeah. do the postings of the meetings uh, we do have minutes that are kept on the meet on the meetings and so those could also be a part of it I just wanted you know obviously to make the distinction that it isn't a uh, a standing committee of mm -hmm. the board, rather a committee that was created by uh, the superintendent, not this superintendent, but definitely was a superintendent co created committee. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you. So we could do that or that could be brought back to the next meeting with the board of policy and on, as well as the superintendent section of it on committees. All right, thank you for that discussion. We are on item M, consent agenda. Is there anything on consent agenda anybody wishes to discuss or do we have a motion to approve? I'd like to pull item 22. We have uh, Mr. Calderon is requesting to pull item number 22. I would like to just pull for discussion item number 12. And uh, I'd like to pull item uh, eight. Eight. Okay, so. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I also would like to pull number six for discussion. Okay, and number six. So we have right now items number six, number eight, number 12, and number 22 asked by the board to be pulled for discussion and then action. Is there anything else before I call for a motion? Seeing nothing else, is there a motion on consent agenda? to approve consent agenda polling items number six, number eight, number 12, and number 22. I move to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon. Is there a second? No second. The second by Ms. Duarte. If nothing else, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, aye. motion carries those voting in favor are trustee Ortega Duarte Calderon and myself. Item number six, Mr. Calderon. Did we, Ms. Uh, this did we, did we bring this to, the, was this brought up last year? Because I know it says here 2013-14 and then it's also asking for 14-15. So why, why is it that it wasn't brought up last year? Uh, this is uh, something that the Imperial County Children uh, and Family First Commission, uh, they have worked with our district and they did not provide us an MOU last year, but they did provide us one now. And so uh, basically they're um, also cleaning up their files and they need to make sure that they have their paperwork correct. And so therefore um, they're doing the MOU for both years as well. Yeah, the uh, the numbers that we're talking about it, they're not they're not uh, uh, big or significant. But what I'm saying is, uh, and I do I know they do a lot of uh, work for not only for us but for Imperial <laughs> County. Mm -hmm. So that we could just keep on on top of this. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion on the item? I'll move to approve. There's a motion to approve item number six from consent agenda by Mr. Calderon. Is there a second? Second. This is second by Mr. Ortega. <coughs> no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Those voting in favor are trustee Ortega, Duarte Calderon, and myself. Item number eight, Mr. Ortega. Yeah, only that, you know, it. This is going out to bid, and in regards to the uh, concerns that the gentleman that was up here earlier uh, addressed, you know, those uh, seems that the situation is dire as to the incidents that have transpired. 
and that you know we, we look at the language that's in that contract that addresses the accountability for, for whatever company um, you know gets uh, uh, the, the bid awarded. And also whatever company you know gets the, gets the contract awarded, that you know in, in addition to price that, that the track record of that company, if they've ever you know uh, done the service for the uh, district, be considered as well. Um, you know, because, you know, right now remembering, and unfortunately I didn't bring this up before, there was another incident that uh, happened about the time when they had the, uh, the relay for life over here in the, in the field, um, where I guess they were, util I, I'm so, unfortunately I didn't attend the event, so I'll just describe what, what, what they mentioned. Uh, there was sand that they were using for that event, that when they returned for the sand days later, it was missing. Um, now, San, of course, isn't you know very expensive, but yet it, it did belong to to the individuals for Relay for Life, and for anybody that's ever worked with San, of course, you know you can't just take it. I mean, you, there's there's a process. You know, you got to either load it up in a truck, put it in bags. I don't know, but it's not easy to just take it, which means they had a lot of time to uh, to remove it. So you know, if we do have a, a control in place, which is a security company, you know, where's uh, where's as the gentleman mentioned. So uh, other than that, you know, that's, that's it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ortega. Maria, did, uh, did the contract already, did it, did it expire? Yes, it did. Yes, it, did. Yeah. it expired in, I believe, December 31st. Okay, so are they working on a month, by, by month basis, or? That is correct at this time. However, it is not the it is not recommended that that process continue uh, much longer, um, and we receive legal advice on that. that uh, at this point, it would be considered something to the effect of uh, uh, you know an emergency. So that's why we 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 still have them, but we do need to secure uh, a bid and a, an award a bid uh, so that we avoid something that is called a bid splitting, if I'm not mistaken. I have a question. Yes. So my understanding was that the 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 issue of the bid was brought to our to us and it was denied, and uh, the district didn't go back and do another contract with um, um, Desert, Security. Desert Security. I believe that the district did attempt to. Um, have legal put together another contract but in reviewing the old contract there was um, um, there was no provision to continue the contract after it's it was expired in December 31st so we we had to go out to bid and um, to avoid any legal issue um, the bid process is the correct process so there is no standing contract right now that is correct and we are using desert um, security on an emergency basis Mm. <coughs> that never came back to this board until right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That that never came back to this board until right now. Okay. And when did we know about the uh, attorney's opinion? Um, I'm not sure on the date. Um, it, I've been working on it since since my return. So, mm -hmm. And you just returned. So I'm saying when did we know about this and why didn't it come to the board before when we knew the decision or the opinion of the... Um, I, I just had a conversation with our attorney last week. Um, so I, that's when we got the opinion back. Or that, that's my understanding. Well, I just don't like the, I just don't like the idea of uh, <coughs> of just working with with uh, with this company on a month by month by month basis. So, so that's where we're going. To. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. but we've known this for a month now or a month and a half. I just knew when I got my agenda. No, no, no. I'm saying, well, no, we 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 didn't go with the, with the proposed company last time when we disapproved this or when we tabled this. So. Yeah, well, and, and that's why I'm asking that we didn't go out and because when it went to the attorney, 
then it should have come back to us the following meeting and say we have a problem with the patrol security patrol contract it never did until right now so it just lifts you know other ideas as to why it's coming back to us until now so it just opens mm -hmm. it just it seems to me that the timeline of it is it was if not how long ago was that meeting where the one in april was it the one in right where, where was it in april or, or before it was only march. a month ago and so i think then the district was under yeah. the presumption that we could just keep the contract as as is and when my started reviewing him last week and sought legal opinion that's my understanding that at that point it was yeah, but you have brought up january february march april so i know it doesn't take four months to put it out to bid the decision would have been before the contract was going to expire so we can get ready to put it out to be immediately. So there's been a couple of months going on. Yeah, there, I think the contract had expired by the time it came to us for a meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I call for the question. Is there a motion on this item, number eight? Make a motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Mr. Ortega. Is there a second? I'll second. A second by Mr. Calderon. No further discussion. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries those voting in favor. Our trustee Ortega and Duarte Calderon and myself. Item number 12. I, I pulled that one. Uh, and I just wanted to point out we had a discussion about <coughs> the, um, the band and their trip at the, our last meeting where we have been asking as, as a board for specific, very specific backup documentation when we get these things brought before us. And I just wanted to point out to, to you my, on the board, um, if you look at the backup information, the supporting documentation that we have now, it's a lot easier for us to see the funds that um, currently this, this bandit has in order to go on this trip. So you can see that they have some band quotes, the, um, what the tickets will cost, the balance that in this case the mariachi has and the fundraising that they have done. And, and so moving forward, this is the type of um, supporting documentation that the board is requesting <coughs> on items. I wanted to point that out in terms of just a wrap-up discussion from our last meeting. I don't know if anyone has any other discussion on on this item. If not, I will motion. I, I do have discussion. Mm -hmm. um, this included the other trips, um, the trip for Tucson, and I know it, they they are, they have, and that was the band, right? The band. That was the band. Tucson, um, was, the Tucson was mariachi. Tu Tucson was mariachi too. Okay. There were three um, trips. There was right, three the trips last. totaling o a little over $30,000. Right. And although um, we do have the ASB total amount, uh, it includes all the ASB accounts that we have. Um, as I see it here, they didn't, they didn't have. No, they did not. <laughs> not even a half of what right, we were going to spend. Close. So, um, this is why it is important to put um, all the backup documentation because although there's, what, over $127,000, that doesn't mean it's up for grads for any of these groups. They all do their own fundraising. They all have their own money, and they're, they're allotted that much. Right now, the mariachi, as I see, is $2,598. We were going to approve over $30,000 on trips. And I mean, I don't want to be the mean one to neglect our kids to go places, but we need to be fair. If the money is not there for that <coughs> particular group, we have to make a decision to deny it. And although we understood that there was still going to be some more fundraising for beef jerky, I don't know if I could sell $27,000, $28,000 of <laughs> beef jerky. Um, so, you know, those are extra costs that if the money is not here in their account, it's going to be taken away from the other, other accounts 
or it's going to become from the general fund that has not been budgeted. So we have to be cautious on this. Um, I know that for that trip, I do. I think they do have the money to cover it. For this one? For this one? This one, yes. Yeah. Just and, and that's about it. That's it. Right? But, you know, um, we have to be, we have to look at it. I mean, we, we are told we shouldn't mismanage the funds. And yet, just to say, I, I, I don't know, I saw another trip there that it says we're going for fun. It's, it's a fun trip. It's a fun trip. And we keep saying they have to be educational trips. Going to, uh, going to Knott's Berry Farm to get an educational, know how right. to treat I others. Think the difference <laughs> that's is that's educational. That, the difference but is that if it's on a weekend, the, the, the rules are a little bit different. If it's during the week and they're pulled from and, school, and, and I understand it has that. an educational but element to it. You know, let, let's, even if it's on a weekend, let's be creative and say it's an educational trip. You know, <laughs> but that's all I wanted to say. I, I wanted to make it, you know, I wanted to let the audience know that in a way it was good we denied those trips at the last meeting right. because the money was not there. Right. Any, other, any further discussion? If not, I make a motion to approve item number 12. Is there a second? No seconds. This is a second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries us voting in favor are Trustee Ortega and Duarte Calderon and myself. Item number 22, Mr. Calderon. Yeah, on this uh, conference again during the summer. Well, I guess it's going to be during the summer, right, Maria? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. So um, I see there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of uh, potential for uh, to bring back a lot of information, not only for uh, teachers and site administrators, but also district personnel. And I think, and um, it would be also good for one of us to uh, maybe attend this conference as well. So. I know we have. I know we have been more and more involved in the uh, uh, in uh, with the conferences, and uh, like I said, I think it would be a good idea. I, I would, would exclude. Like to, I would. I would like to add two board members. I, or well, well, I can't. I can't. No, I'm. I'm. I know. We don't have to decide now. Yeah. We don't have. Yeah, yeah. but uh, okay. or two board know. members. Well. So I would like to make the motion to include two board members for this conference on uh, number 22 for the oh, Portland, Oregon on June 25th to the 27th. It's a motion by Mr. Calderon to approve item number 22 with the addition of two board members. Is there a second? I'll second. Is, is this the one that Mr. Duarte is already attending? No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon, a second by Ms. Duarte. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries those voting in favor. Our trustee Ortega, Duarte Calderon, and myself. Mr. Ureña did not show up, and his item was um, part of consent agenda. So for the record, he, um, he's not here. Moving on to item and information only. <coughs> We have the accounts payable pre-list. Is it taking a while to open or it's not We're just open? waiting for ours uh -huh. to load. It's not loading. So yeah. It, it's oh, not. Well, it's up there, but it's not up here. I don't know how to turn it. 
turn it around. Is yours loading? It just did, but it's a oh. look. Yeah. Right there, uh, rotate, right? Yeah. No, you, no. It, like that? It's, okay. it's, okay. it's okay. just the first <laughs> page. <laughs> I know. Now we won't do it anyway. No, yeah, no. Oh, there you go. Not to do page by page clockwise. No. Do 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 the first page and it'll go go back to landscape. Do the first page where I it says did, first and week. It, era. And then if I change no, 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 because it turns the, the, the rest of the document. Right. Sideways. Oh do the so do this per, this page. Do the first week sideways. I stop. Yeah. If it's loaded, does anybody have any any questions, any com any comments on the pre-list? My one load. I don't think I have any. Mr. Ortega. No, nothing at this time. I, I do have one on um, on page six of nine in the first week. Um, Franco Nunez, uh, <coughs> did he have to pay for the whole conference for the whole um, accom hotel accommodations, mileage, and all that? Or because it's he received a Reimbursement is for a thousand six hundred and six dollars. The reimbursement is um, for a thousand six hundred. Okay, it does say that he was uh, paid mileage, so it could have been. Where where was the conference at? Uh, it says CTE standards workshop. I would have to pull out the the backup documentation to find out where it was, um, to see if it was if it was a hotel. Um, and the only reason that I find that he would pay the hotel is maybe because his his uh, requisition didn't came in at all, so he decided to go to the workshop at the at the last um, minute. So that's why he had to pay. And, and this was an approved workshop by us. Mm -hmm. The the workshop was approved on September twenty fourth. Okay. So most of the times, what hap well what happened in uh, early in the year now it's changed that they would say uh, three certificated staff and two principals, and then they would decide who was going to go. But now, um, as directed by the board, now we, s we put the names so that this doesn't happen. OK. Um, so there may be that it's the, mm -hmm. the hotel and, and Yeah, I can pull out the backup. OK. The f OK. I did get um, I did get the the report that I wanted for the field, and I I got all the invoices, so I had to calculate everything by diesel and and gas, mm -hmm. and um, I went back to look at the account codes that was used. <coughs> um, I didn't get as far as looking into the budget with that account code to see how much it was. But I presume that we have enough money to to cover the fuel, right? Yes, I and mean, if for some reason that it, it needs <laughs> increase to be increased, because we know we need uh, fuel for, for all of our buses. Correct. We, we try to, when budgeting, we try to take into account for the whole school year that, um, you know, that sometimes you know, the price of gas goes up and down, but we definitely yeah. look at prior year to see how much we spend and increase it by, you know, 10, 15 percent so that we can. 
Okay. And I, I was thinking about um, putting, since we put everything out to bid, um, putting out the gas to bid, but I don't know. I mean, we get it from SoCo. I don't know if it's through a bid process or or um, we just I go based on the... If we spend over the threshold, because uh, typically if, if we're going to spend, which I'm sure we do, um, and we're not be something that we need to do or that check to see if there's a contract or something, Okay, and I know that um, because I've, I've had some questions into the dairy, how the amount has increased dramatically to compare to what was the original bid that we approved. Um, the amount of milk goes up, so they raise the rate. Uh, I don't recall in that contract seeing how much of a percentage they can arbitrarily just raise it okay. and, without our consent. Um, and I saw the gas prices of diesel and fuel, and they do fluctuate every time they come and right. fill up our tanks, um, which is a dollar less than what is out there on the streets. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if, if, if we can look and see if it's better to compete on a yearly basis or maybe, I don't know if they still do that, where uh, a company can buy so much gas from a, from a corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, and by let's say, um, you know, eighty-six thousand that we've been spending on on fuel right now, uh, maybe say we're gonna buy a hundred thousand dollars from you, and once those hundred thousand dollars are gone, then we'll rebid again or or something, you know, negotiate a, a set price. So when the gas fluctuates, it, it if we buy it at three dollars a, uh, a gallon, it it's it will be at three dollars. Three dollars a gallon, and I know some companies do that, especially uh, big companies that use the diesel all the time. You know, mm -hmm. have have trucks and stuff. So that may be something that we can look into, so we can budget a hundred thousand or hundred fifty thousand dollars into the budget and get the the going that going rate at that day instead of playing the stock market with the gas. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if I can just add to that. In, in regards to what uh, Ms. Trustee Duarte was saying, um, you know, I I worked in the fuel industry for a long, long time, and you know the way the service stations do it, which would be the way the district would do it, um, the distributor like Soco is is what you call a jobber, meaning they receive their fuel from the refinery, and every day the service stations, if you're work, if you're not branded, which means Unical, Texaco, et cetera, you know, if you're like a 7-Eleven, that would be unbranded. You receive what's called rack pricing, uh, meaning a rack is what like you see by the motor view, those big tanks, that uh, fuel was transported underground um, and, and received at that facility. Um, that is a rack. So all the uh, companies, you know, and, uh, they're SoCo, they're Supreme, they're Southern County, they're sellers. Uh, they will submit their rack pricing to you for that particular day. That load will be scheduled 24 hours ahead of time. And of course, that price will be honored because as you indicated, it, it fluctuates. So I don't know if you have to be under a contract with them, but if you don't, and you can utilize that strategy, even though it takes a little bit more time, but the cost savings, I mean, would be you know, would be tremendous. Um, that but might be something to consider, because again, you know, and I'd be happy to help. I mean, I've been involved for a long, long time. Yeah. Okay. Use your board members. <laughs> I have a question on page, page five, page four, uh, 21530 ETS and star. Page four, four of what? ETS start on. Oh. Page four of what week? Oh, the first one. Oh, the first mm -hmm. week? Mm-hmm. They must have uh, missed their deadline, and um, they order the, the material. That's from what I get from the um, description. That's <coughs> what it, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, this is assessment. So I will... Yeah, so I'll I'll check with Mrs. Nanez or or whoever was in charge, uh -huh, or Mr. Estrada. I don't know. Can 
he's here. Dr. Stan. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Isaac Estrada, Director of Economic Services. Um, question, could you repeat the question about uh, the expense? Uh, number four from the top down on page four of the first week, ETS and STARS is a material order penalty, 1950, dollars um, That expense is uh, based on the materials that we order for the pre-ID. And we ordered uh, two sets of pre-ID based on the counts. So the second order that we did was um, based on a new count that I received. So basically, it reads penalty because it was, it was after the initial deadline. So they have two deadlines, one for the original order, and the second de deadline, they call it the supplementary deadline. And the penalty, basically, it's there to indicate that the fee is a little bit higher than the original deadline. No, uh, my understanding is it's the total cost. It's not per se just the penalty in itself. It includes some materials. And the pre-ID? And the pre-ID, which goes on our um, answer documents when the kids take the test. Anything else? I think we have anything else. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. I was. I, I, it was mostly a, mainly a comment on the IID bill for um, it, it, it's uh, eighty three thousand dollars for the month of February. Mm -hmm. um, we know that was a short month and it wasn't uh, cold for the ACs to come on. But uh, just a reminder uh, for people to turn off their lights. Some, I mean, the summer is here. <laughs> the summer is here. ACs are running, but you know, make sure that all the electric electrical appliances that need to be shut down at the end of the day be shut down, lights off, and stuff. Because I still drive by schools at night, and some classrooms have their lights on, and um, well, computers. I mean, maybe we can invest in surge plugs so that on Fridays they can turn off their computer. But yeah, that's true. I have seen some blue lights. Not, not the classroom lights, but blue lights. And um, let's, let's just send a reminder, you know, wherever we can save money, because it's 83000 for February. I can imagine what our summer bills are going to be. Yeah. Just little ways of saving, saving a penny here and a penny there. All right, thank you. We're going to move on to item O. Superintendent recommends approval of the following items. You have three items before you, and we will turn it over to Ms. Ambris. <coughs> yes, with the first one, with uh, the authorization to seek bids for the asbestos abatement, um, we have uh, some trailers that need to be um, disposed of. Uh, or removed from our district. But before we can do that, we need to abate the asbestos that is in these or on these trailers. Um, part of the trailers happen to be the ones that are on that empty lot near adjacent to Willie Moreno. We've got uh, one at, I believe, uh, at Main School. And I think we have uh, two at uh, Kennedy Gardens, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, before we can do anything in removing them, we have to abate the, the asbestos in them. Uh, even if we wanted to uh, sell them or you know, dismantle and destroy them, uh, any, anything that would potentially set the asbestos into the environment um, would make us obviously liable. So we really need to do the, the abatement for this asbestos before we do the removal. Although it may already have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're all broken up. Yes, but that's. Are we talking about the uh, Kennedy Gardens? Are we talking about the one without the cats, or are we talking about the? Uh, that's one of them, sir. That is one of them. Yes. 
That is one of them, sir. Uh, I was talking about the ones at Willy Moreno. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> There's nothing left. <laughs> I mean, apart from being an eyesore and a, obviously a, a feeding nest for these critters, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word, um, it, they do pose a continued danger. So, so know. the cost would be eighty-seven thousand. That's, that's our potential estimate for that for the abatement and that's not the removal of these um, yeah. things this is just to abate and uh, in the event that that we are able to uh, sell uh, any of these uh, trailers as is of obviously whomever purchases is responsible for the for the cost of removal I think they would just take the trailer with the wheel and you know perhaps yes to put okay. pull it up. They can pay a t two cents if, <laughs> as long as they take. <laughs> it has to be a dollar. Well, then they can take it for a dollar. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they they have to be removed. I make a motion to approve the the cost of the abatement. So the uh, the the motion would be to um, recommendation of a, approving. Uh, seeking bids for the asbestos oh, okay. That's right. abatement. So I just want to do it now. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could uh, just state your motion that way. Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, the recommendation. Okay, there's a motion by Ms. Duarte to approve the recommendation. Is there a second? second. There's a second by Mr. Calderon. No further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Those voting in favor are Trustee Ortega. Duarte Calderon and myself. Item number two. The second item is uh, to procure a bid for the Maine's Elementary ADA Accessibility Compliance Improvements. Um, as you know, part of any of the work that we do goes through DSA, and one of the uh, requirements is the, the path of travel for, the, for ADA compliance, and that is what this bid is, is about. Okay, so that we can secure uh, the improvements that are necessary so that they do meet with the, the Department of State Architect approval. Motion to approve. Second do we have just, Maria, can you clarify on the supporting documents? It says Jimmy Sanders. Is he the architect that's already is assigned to this? Yes, he is. He, yes. This is a continued. Um, Continued it's work. Ongoing. It's continued work uh, that's been ongoing for a while now, and so as this, as we try attempt to uh, complete projects that are going to meet the closeout requirements, um, ADA obviously is a major uh, component to all of our, our our DSA approvals. Okay, thank you. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch who made the motion. I, m I motion to approve. Ms. Duarte, so there's a motion on the table to approve the procurement and advertising for bids for Maine's Elementary ADA Accessibility Compliance Project. Is there a second? I second. And there's a second by Mr. Calderon. Thank you. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, all those voting in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Those voting in favor are Trustee Ortega, Duarte Calderon, and myself. Item number three. And. Item number three is regarding um, the sale of selected modular buildings that are located at Jefferson Elementary School. If I'm not mistaken, these buildings were a initially through, I believe, board process in, in the past, um, committed to, I believe, St. Mary's in El Centro. But unfortunately, because they are a private uh, institution, we cannot uh, legally uh, sell these or... or you know, gift them or any in any regard to a private entity such as St. Mary's. And so we do believe that um, uh, there are interested parties such as the Neighborhood House, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Neighborhood House, and that would l seek to um, uh, purchase these modular buildings <coughs> and pay for their removal from our sites, Who which is from Jefferson School. Who would pay for this? For the removal? Uh, they pay for it. They pay well, for neighborhood well, house, neighborhood for example. Neighborhood house pays for the removal. Whoever mm -hmm. buys them pays mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. it. I think we sold them for a dollar. Uh, yes, I believe that's the. Maybe we should start having a surplus act auction and 
Maybe we can end up with three dollars. <laughs> yeah. We'll have three dollars here. <laughs> three dollars each. Yeah, no. Well, yes. three dollars each. Yeah. <laughs> and what are these uh, modules already uh, empty and ready to be? Yes, they are. They delivered, are. taken away, and all that. Yes, they are. They are no longer being used by our district students in any way. And it's a pretty penny to move them out, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Quite a bit. Is there a motion to approve the recommendation? I'll make the motion. It's a motion by Mr. Calderon to approve the recommendation <coughs> to adopt the resolution regarding selling certain modular buildings. Is there a second? Second. Is a second by Mr. Ortega. No further discussion. Um, Signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Those voting in favor are Trustee Ortega Duarte Calderon and myself. Can I read the resolution? I'll open it. Oh, here's the. How long is it? All right, I'll read it. Or pending a resolution number, Calexico Unified School District, resolution of the governing board of the California Unified, Calexico Unified School District, declaring certain modular buildings as surplus personal property of the district and authorizing the superintendent to sell those certain modular buildings to Calexico Neighborhood House, pursuant to section 17546 of the Education Code, whereas Calexico Unified School District, otherwise known as district, owns and operates public school facilities in Calexico, California. And whereas the district is the owner of certain modular buildings located at 1201 Cloak Road, Calexico, California, 92231. And whereas the district has an oversupply of modular buildings at 1201 Cloak Road, Calexico, California, 92231. They are no longer serving an educational purpose to the district and are surplus to district needs. And whereas certain modular buildings are identified by the following serial number, classroom 42, 017292 and 17293 modular 1, classroom 43, serial 42429 and 42430 modular 2, and classroom 44, serial number 9606 and 9607 modular 3. And whereas the district finds that the modular buildings are of insufficient value to defray cost of arranging a sale, and whereas the interest of the district would be served by the district's declaration of the certain modular buildings as surplus personal property for a donation of the personal property, and whereas Education Code 17546 authorizes the district's governing board by unanimous vote to sell property to a charitable organization deemed appropriate by the governing board upon a finding that the property is of insufficient value to defray the cost of arranging a sale. And whereas Calexico Neighborhood House is located at 506 East 4th Street, Calexico, California, 92231, and is deemed a charitable organization deemed appropriate by the board and whereas the district desires to sell the modular buildings one through three to Cal Calexico Neighborhood House for one dollar each, now therefore be it resolved that the above recitals are true and correct. Modular buildings one through three no longer serve an educational purpose to the Calexico Unified School District and therefore surplus personal property. The Calexico Unified School District authorizes the superintendent of schools to donate modular buildings one through three to Calexico Neighborhood House Pursuant to Education Code Section 17546, the Governing Board approves the delegation of authority to the superintendent or designee to donate the above reference property in accordance with Education Code Section 17546. Pass and adopted this first day of May 2014 by the Governing Board at a regular meeting by the following vote. Those voting in favor are Trustee Ortega Duarte Calderon and myself. Absent is Trustee Aguilar and there are no abstentions. We are on item P of our agenda, board members closing comments. Mr. Ortega, would you like to start? Yes, uh, I have nothing at this time. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Ms. Duarte? Nothing at this time. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. I went to a, uh, to a facilities meeting to the high, at the high school uh, <coughs> Tuesday, right before our uh, emergency. Uh, board meeting on Tuesday and um, they explained how the process of coming up with this plan regarding uh, 
uh, a mattress plan for, uh, facilities plan for the district and um, a few parents and teachers attended so uh, maybe next time if uh, I know we did more than uh, above and beyond what we needed to do but uh, it would be nice if we could uh, invite, find a different way to invite more people or have people attend um, because uh, after all this is uh, like I mentioned on, on that meeting uh, uh, I may be gone one day uh, this board may be gone one day, but those uh, the parents and their kids are going to be here. Their kids are going to be here. Their grandkids are going to be here. So it's for the it's in their best interest to attend. So if we can find a way to uh, maybe uh, pursue them to come to the to these meetings. But I mean, I know we went above and beyond what we needed to do. Um, we did uh, the phone dialer messages with the students uh, and their backpacks and everything. But um, but oh, but. Uh, regardless of that, I think uh, the fact that we are having these meetings and they're open to the public, they have to be open to the public, but the fact that we are trying to get the public's input, I think it, it, it it's a good idea and we have to do it because once again, it's for the community. It's not just for, uh, for, uh, for this board to approve, but for the community to, uh, to have an input on, on what is it that we're going to do and, and how is it that we're going to do it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. I have nothing. We're going to reconvene to our earlier closed session. Um, if you're interested in seeing the items, they are item F above on your agenda. It is 723.